seriously. And musicians here are probably the worst. Well, maybe rightly so. But can you believe that in the early 70s, a Kiwi band was so bizarre in appearance and eccentric in performance that even the music heavies found it hard to take them seriously? Not for long, though. Musically, Split Ends were New Zealand's premier band. From their debut album, Mental Notes, recorded in Australia, to the last note of their Ends with a Bang tour in late 1984, the Ends have consistently cornered the market in the good to great music territory. Their decision to call it a day could only have one wishing for history to repeat. <laughs> since the band split. They did one reunion gig for Greenpeace in April, but X ends members are now on their own roads with no looks back. Tim Finn has a solo career in London. Neil Finn and drummer Paul Hester are the nucleus for a new band, Crowded House, in Australia. Eddie Rayner has had work with international recording artists in the league of Paul McCartney. Noel Crombie, living in Melbourne, is working in films doing design. Nigel Griggs, as far as we know, is resting between engagements. The last days of the ends were good days. Let's go back in time.
hysterically anti all this. Weird. That camera there, you would have that would have been smashed about a year ago. Realize? In fact, I'm getting very close to it now. Oh, well. Now that we've all come out of the closet, we're much more gentle sort of people, you know? New Zealand band yeah. and they're really good value just basically and they just put New Zealand on the map really. Yeah. How long have you been a fan? Oh yes. ages! Yes. Yes. I found out about them. Yeah. How long? When was that? About four years ago. I don't know. So how many concerts have you been to? None. This is the first one? Yeah. What are you expecting? This yeah. to be really excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I don't want them to split up. Yeah. Such yeah. Really I saw them at Sweetwater a couple of years ago.
end, all through its split ends. It's 13 past three. Good afternoon. I do hope the afternoon's going well for you and uh, a very warm welcome into the studio, Noel Crombie of Split Ends. Hi, Neil. Hi, it's nice to have you here. Split Ends, of course, is performing tonight at the Kensington Stadium and uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions about, about, about the group, how it's gone so far. The tour is ends with a bang. Yeah. How has the tour gone so far? Oh, great. Um, we've probably paid to more people in New Zealand than we did last time and uh, last time was basically an outdoor sort of venue show um, and we thought that was as far as it would probably go you know it's uh, been constant surprise over the last four years or so it's just kept on growing you know I don't know where they're all coming from <laughs> so this is it isn't it um, yep. you went to Australia first and now going through the country this is the final the last one <laughs>
from just outside of Kaitai where they live and um, I realised that, that that'll be the last time that I'll see them um, like I, I see them once every year regularly um, and I've always sort of got that to look forward to and I've also got that to look forward to with every town we go to in New Zealand as well and uh, it's just a bit it's a strange feeling when I realise that there's a chance that I'll never go to New Plymouth again. When you go on tour you tend to forget about the breakup and uh, it sort of hits you when you get to the major cities it sort of surrounds you again people come at you and talk about it. I mean like me and Nigel like Nigel's um, English and I'm Australian and everyone else is New Zealanders so when they come back here it's like everything's great because it's New Zealand you know and everything's you know it's sickeningly patriotic. No it's been great it's in a lot of ways the tour has been a very low pressure tour because we're, we're really not um, concerned about next year's career or anything we're just going out and enjoying what we do well I think we do the best and that's playing and entertaining on stage. Certain audiences perhaps make you more aware of the fact that it's the last time you know, the emotion to people crying and that. We're so used to it now it seems like this tour has been endless so it's a bit hard to say comparing it to other tours I've sort of forgotten. <laughs> Sometimes having a great audience just puts a pressure on you, in fact, because you don't feel like you have to deliver. You'll still get your reaction, whatever you do, and then it can feel a little unreal sometimes. I prefer an audience that you have to win over, you know. Always, you know, always for the audience. You know, there's, there's no uh, two ways about it, you know. Unless, of course, you're in a real bad mood and you're being a real sort of, you know, um, whacker, then you tend to sort of, you know, become know or do it all for yourself or something you know uh, it's, it's just a natural way to do it now I just want to en enjoy playing my instrument and playing it in, in the songs we've got because we've got great songs and it's been uh, uh, great inspiration for me when it's happening it's all one you know the audience the band you as a person the sound the lights it's all just one big thing I, mean, I love looking at all the people out there and seeing all the different sorts you know watching reactions and stuff and um, and sometimes you can be th a million miles away, <laughs> but uh, ultimately I suppose you have to be fairly well there because um, playing is a, is a thing that relies on an interaction with the other people, and so you have to be aware and listening to, to get the most out of it.
and parents I do. Life on the road, eh? Uh, Mr. John Farrity, the longest serving member of the Split Ends crew, with the longest serving member. Take off your glasses, John. Take off your glasses, John. Oh, come on. Uh, John's a confirmed smoker. Um, <laughs> apart from that, he's got a keen mind, a quick, quick wit, and he's deaf in one ear. Yeah. <laughs> and he does sound. He's, he's in charge of the man. sound department. Does a great job too. Yeah. Um, Rod. Rod, what can we Rod, say? Rod, Rod's a, a recent addition in, in some respects, although he was with us a couple of years ago in Canada, where he was forced to leave because the bun was in the oven. Wasn't it, Rod? Well? Look at this, look at Electronics this. Electronics Weekly. He's just on that friendly bus trip down in Rock. He's going through the stars just to see if there's any little planets up there he might be able to locate and notch down his little folder. I'll pass this back to your ball. There you go. See? We have Kevin. Kevin here, a regular on many tours, many oh, New Zealand Kevin, tours. Kevin always keeps to himself, quiet, quiet, but underneath there boils a man of complete lack of shame, complete... Always in trouble with the police, Kevin. Always in, always in trouble with the police. Never mind, never mind. Now we move on to the right-hand side of the bus. Here. We have Nigel, a uh, tear away from the Uruwiras. Um, he was last seen chasing five young girls. No, no, we won't talk about that. about the song list and you know um, what sound I have to set up for the next song or it's, it's usually techni technicalities for me. On a, an average night you can be thinking about anything from paying the gas bill to uh, you know what you're gonna do after the show or how tired you are or how you wish it was the last song already but that thankfully doesn't happen that often and there's been most shows on this tour we've managed to the enjoyment factor has been well up there. It's hard getting six people to feel the same way each night for three months. I'm enjoying playing more than ever at the moment, just personally. Um, maybe it's because uh, it is the last time. There's an extra sort of energy, extra emphasis on it, uh, desire to play well. You can't expect to be in one place or, or be in a band and be serious about it without touring because you know it's just part of the, the structure of, of the business. Um, and that, that sort of thing, that's just part and parcel with playing, really. But I guess uh, the business side of things has tended to make us a little cynical. Mr. Bauer Rafferty. Mr. Bauer to his friends. He has to be here. He has to be here. Stay with us, don't let temptation be your low. Stay with us. 
gentlemen, we'll leave you to the best part of the back line. Sometimes I just feel people have come down just to check out the legend, you know, just to check out this band that's been around for so long and has been part of their lives and, oh, we better go and see them, you know, and the, that's a dangerous thing for me to think. I, I don't think that's really the truth. I think people are genuinely interested in our music, but sometimes you can tend to think that they're just there because we're split ends and they just, they feel they should see us or something, you know. <laughs> Words. 
This is the sort of thing that we'd sing at talent quests at Mount Manganui when we were about 16 or 17. It's true. <laughs>
out of step everywhere, I think. Um, out of step here, out of step in Australia when we first arrived, and uh, at, certainly out of step in England when we went there from Australia. Minute work was a, suddenly a big, obviously it was so, so, that was so big that it made a huge difference. So, yeah, maybe, but I, I accept things the way they are. We've, we've always tended to uh, um, avoid what was currently happening in a lot of ways, image-wise. And If something was happen happening, we used to uh, tend to react against it and go our own way. And that's probably uh, as much to do with it as anything, I would think. But I, I'm glad, you know, I'd, I'd hate to be one of those bands that, uh, I don't know, get too influenced by what is number one at the moment. I don't think we ever did that. Riding on waves is probably not as much fun as trying to make them. I reckon, and what we did in 1980 is uh, was quite significant, and we didn't really publicise it at the time. But I think we opened a lot of doors for bands like Men at Work and that, and we are just being able to like go into Los Angeles and play the Greek Theatre and pack it out, and is is you know feels like a success to me. And I, that we, just because we weren't in the top ten doesn't mean to say that we didn't attract a lot of attention. And we've got a very strong body of fans still. We get letters pouring in every week, especially now we're breaking up. They're baffled over there. They want us to do a farewell tour in America. Well, I don't know why.
trek the Himalayas early next year, once I've done all this other stuff. Um, I also want to trek across Asia to India um, with Noel, pick up a motorbike in India and then ride back. And then in February, um, I'm going to build a pergola as well on the back of the house. Oh, yeah. I might give you the yeah. hand with this pergola. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of friends of mine are getting a cartoon character off the ground in Melbourne, and they want me to be the voice of Walter Dinky. So I'll be Walter Dinky for a while. And what's Walter Dinky uh, do? Oh, he's Ooh. just a full time sort you of it. tool, really. Yeah. <laughs> it's hardcore, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd hate to know what I was going to do because that's sort of spoil excitement for the I'll well, rationalise much. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to enjoy having absolutely no plans at all, other than um, maybe uh, sending my girlfriend out to work. See you around!